Hello there, this is Dr. Ridwan. Welcome to RedMed BD. Today we are going to talk about the coronary circulation. The main function of the heart is to circulate the blood throughout the whole body. So a major portion of the blood always remains inside of the heart. But the heart does not get its nutritional supply from the blood it contains. There are two reasons for that. Reason number one is the inner lining or covering of the heart. It is almost watertight. Uh, what does the word watertight means? Which means the blood cannot penetrate the lining and reach the myocardium. The lining epithelium of the inner covering of the heart. The blood cannot penetrate it. Another reason is the thickness of the myocardium. Heart muscle is thick. Even if the blood was able to penetrate the inner lining, there would not be enough force to reach all the layers of myocardium. This is why, like any other organ such as brain, lungs or kidneys, heart needs its own circulation and we call it the coronary circulation. As you can see, this is the front side or anterior aspect of the heart which is on the left side of the screen and over the right side of the screen there is the back of the heart which is also known as the posterior inferior surface of the heart. The reason behind putting these two pictures side by side is to make it easier for you to understand the actual course of the coronary arteries. We will start with the right coronary artery. Uh, we can see the aorta right there. The right coronary artery arises from the right aortic sinus and then it courses through the aortic sulcus to reach the back of the heart. This is the right coronary artery which mostly supplies the right side of the heart which includes the right atrium and right ventricle. Uh, how much of the right side of the heart is supplied by the right coronary artery we will discuss about it later in this video. Alright, next is the posterior descending artery which is shortly known as the PDA. PDA is the branch of a right coronary artery. Another name for PDA is the posterior interventricular artery, which is because the artery runs downwards towards the apex of the heart through the posterior interventricular groove. Okay, so the next artery on the list is called the right marginal artery. It is a branch of the right coronary artery. It is called marginal because it runs along the right margin of the heart. Another name for this artery is called the um, acute marginal artery because if you look at the angle between these two arteries, you will see they form an angle below 90 degrees, which is an acute angle. Next artery on the list is called the SA nodal artery. It gets its name because it courses over the top of the heart and then supplies the sinoatrial node or also widely known as the SA node. Alright, so now let's focus over the posterior inferior surface of the heart over the right side of the screen. You see the right coronary artery and the PDA forms a shape that resembles the letter T which also looks like a cross shape. A cross in Latin is called crux. This is why this particular area of the heart is called the crux of the heart. Uh, right from that crux, there is a little artery that comes off to supply the AV node, which is called the AV nodal artery. So this is the right coronary artery and its branches in a nutshell. Okay, so now let's talk about how much of the heart is supplied by the right coronary artery. Right coronary artery supplies the right atrium, right ventricle, posterior part of the interventricular septum, SA node for 60% of the cases and AV node for 90% of the cases. Okay, so that was all about the right coronary artery and now we will talk about the left coronary artery. Left coronary artery arises from the left aortic sinus. 
This artery is very short and it is also called the left main coronary artery. Right after originating from the aortic sinus, it bifurcates into two branches. The anterior branch is called the anterior descending artery or LAD for short. Another name of this artery is called the anterior interventricular artery because the artery courses between two ventricles towards the apex of the heart. Another branch of the left coronary artery is the circumflex artery. Circumflex means something that bends or curves around the structure. You see, the circumflex artery gets its name because it bends around the left side of the heart and then goes to the posterior inferior surface of the heart. Another artery that arises from the circumflex artery and runs along the left margin of the heart, this is called the left marginal artery. Left coronary artery mainly supplies the left side of the heart. It supplies the left atrium, left ventricle, anterior part of the interventricular septum, AC node for 40% of the cases and AV node for 10% of the cases. That was all about the left coronary artery. I'm not going in more details on this. I'm just trying to give you an idea about the principal branches of the coronary arteries. Alright, so some of you might be wondering, why do these arteries are called the coronary arteries? The word corona means crown. As you can see on this picture, the total shape of the artery looks like a crown. This is the reason why they are called the coronary arteries. Uh, there is another thing you need to know which is called the coronary dominance. Let's look at the posterior inferior surface of the heart. Coronary dominance depends upon the origin of the PDA or posterior descending artery. Posterior descending artery usually arises from the right coronary artery but it can also arise from the left coronary artery as well. When PDA arises from the right coronary artery, which happens to the most of the cases, it is called the right dominant heart. If the PDA arises from the left coronary artery, it is called the left dominant heart. But sometimes posterior descending artery can arise from both right and left coronary arteries, then we call it a co dominant heart. Okay, so now as the coronary dominance is out of the way, we should talk about why the coronary arteries are called the end arteries. They are called the end arteries because they do not join any other arteries. Which means each particular part of the heart is uniquely supplied by a single coronary artery. Which means each particular part of the heart is uniquely supplied by a single coronary artery. Blockage in any particular artery will lead to the cessation of circulation to that area of the heart, leading to the damage of that part of the heart. That was all about coronary arteries. Now let us move to the next part of the video, which is about the cardiac veins. Great cardiac vein goes up along the anterior interventricular groove and then courses along the coronary sulcus to finally drain into the coronary sinus. Coronary sinus is a large cardiac vein which drains into the right atrium of the heart. Great cardiac vein drains into the territory supplied by the left coronary artery. Small cardiac vein arises from the tissue along the right margin of the heart and then courses along the right coronary sulcus to drain into the coronary sinus. Middle cardiac vein. Middle cardiac vein courses up along the posterior interventricular groove and then drains into the coronary sinus. Bottom line, small cardiac vein and middle cardiac vein drains the territory supplied by the right coronary artery. Alright, let's summarize the coronary circulation now. Oxygenated blood 
goes through the right coronary artery, supplies the right side of the heart, then the blood gets drained into the small and middle cardiac vein which then drains into coronary sinus which ultimately drains into the right atrium. Left side of the heart is supplied by the left coronary artery which drains into the great cardiac vein which drains into the coronary sinus and finally empties into the right atrium. That was the total coronary circulation in nutshell. I hope the discussion was easy enough for you to understand. Please let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.